Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's Power Move, we're going to talk about this single part file, which is actually a multi-body part file, and we're going to talk about how to take the individual bodies and kick them off into their own standalone part files. And this topic of working with multi-body parts is something that we get into in Toby's Advanced SolidWorks Part Design training class. So if you're interested in this topic of multi-body or in any of these other topics that you see here on the screen, go ahead over to twotalltoby.com slash training. You can sign up for an upcoming training class. And I think we're actually having one next week. So this is a great time to get some training in advanced SolidWorks part design. All right, so let's take a look at this challenge. Our challenge is to take this multi-body part design, which it's nice when you can design multi-body because you've got these different parts that are related to one another. You kind of want them to update together. But now we want to take one of these bodies, let's say this shelf two, and we want to kick this off into its own part file. And there's several reasons why you might want to do this. Maybe it makes it easier to create a drawing when it's its own standalone part. Maybe you're doing it for data management. You want that shelf to have its own skew or its own revision level. Or maybe you're doing it for manufacturing. Maybe you need to export that part to CNC and it's easier when it's its own standalone part. Whatever the reason, there's basically three different methods you can use to accomplish this. And the one that I use most commonly is I go here into the bodies tree. So here where it says solid bodies, I find the body that I want to export and I do a right mouse button insert into new part. Now from here, the property manager will say insert into new part. It'll show you the body or bodies that you're trying to insert into a new part. It'll give you the option to give this new part a file name to propagate the visual properties and to select the template that you want to use. Now I'm just gonna go with the default here. And when I hit the green check mark, SolidWorks says the template that you selected, so in this case, it's my default template, has a different unit of measurement than the base part. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna change the unit of measurement for the derived part? Or do you wanna use the, the unit of measurement that's in your template? So I'm gonna say no, just use the unit of measurement in my template. And what happens is that solid body is added to a new part file. You can see here it's called part seven. And you can see here that SolidWorks is asking me to name this new part file. So I'm gonna choose cancel. So the new part file has not yet been saved. And what we see here is that the part was added to this new part file based on the template that I selected. And we can see here in the tree that we've got this symbol, this minus sign greater than symbol. And what that minus sign greater than symbol means is that this part does have an external reference back to the original. There is gonna be kind of a dynamic link, at least in one direction, back to the original. All right, let's try this again and use a few more of the options that were shown there. So this time I'm gonna once again go to shelf two. I'm gonna do a right mouse button, insert into new part. And this time I'm gonna give this thing a file name. So I'll call this uh, shelf two, shelf two. And I'm gonna say I wanna propagate the visual properties. And I'm gonna say I wanna override the default template. And I'll hit the dot, dot, dot here. And I will choose uh, one of my templates. I'll choose the part ABS MMGS. And so we hit the green check mark. And now this time we see we don't get any error messages because the unit system of the template matches the unit system of the original. We see that the part file has already been named shelf two. And we see that that kind of cyan color has come across from the original model and is showing up here in the derived part. So this is a great way to go. This is a great way to get your bodies out from the original into their own standalone part files. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that in the tree, we've got this symbol here. This is the uh, minus sign greater than sign. And what that symbol means is that there is an external reference in this part file. And so what this means is if we go back to the original shelf model, the multi-body, sometimes you call this the seed or the master model. If we go back to that original master model and we add a feature that affects this body, for example, if I add some holes here to maybe include some pins in this design, this is gonna go through all in both directions. So now you can see that we've added these holes here running down these legs, and those holes are going through everything, including that shelf two. Well, now when we return to that shelf two part file, we can see that those holes are automatically included. That's because we've got this external reference back to the original master model but that external reference only goes in one direction. So if, for example, I was to create a big hole here on the top of this shelf, and we'll fire that hole through all, when we return to that master model, we're not gonna see that hole. 
because that external reference only goes in one direction. So we can see here that when we use the command insert body into new part, we end up with the seed, the externally referenced body, and then downstream from that in the tree, we've got this new cut extrude that we created. Well, because that comes after the external reference, we're not gonna see that feature here when we return to the master model. Now, like I said, there's primarily three ways that you can accomplish this. You can go into the multi-body solid bodies tree, right mouse button on one of the bodies and choose insert into new part. We just saw a demonstration of that. You can also, from the insert pull down menu, you can choose the command insert features save bodies. So way down here at the bottom, you could choose save bodies. This kind of lets you do this whole process in batch and export the entire multi-body. You can even convert that into an assembly all in one step or you could start a new part document. And in that new part document, you could use the command insert part. And this lets you browse to an existing part and add it into this empty part document. So there's a few different ways that we can accomplish this task of taking a multi-body design and kind of splitting it up into individual parts. And if you enjoyed that, and if you like my style of teaching, maybe consider signing up for the advanced part modeling class next week, or even some of our other classes. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next episode of Power Moves.